Well, hi everyone, Corey Barker here with Master Effects Training. Now in this short little video, I wanna show you um, how depth maps work inside of Photoshop 3D. I had someone ask me about this. They saw, they went in the menu here and they went to new mesh from layer and saw depth map and all these different settings here. So I just wanna give you an idea of what those are. Now, basically, a depth map creates a three-dimensional object based on the light and dark areas of the layer. For instance, I'm gonna go in here and grab my gradient tool and I've already got a, a gradient set up here, but I'm actually gonna change some things here. I wanna make this a more neutral gray. So I'm, what I'm doing is just making a simple black to gray, black to gray gradient here, as you can see right there. Now, when you create a depth map, it is going to look at, the, as I said, the tonal, um, the various tones of your image, and it's gonna push elements back that are dark and then bring elements forward that are light. So for instance here, these areas of black are gonna get pushed back and we're essentially creating a wave um, 3D object here. So I'm gonna click OK and let's go ahead and draw the gradient on this image. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer and let's go ahead and just draw it across here. And there you can see I get that. I'm actually gonna make those grays just a little bit darker, I think. Because the greater the, the brighter the color, the more it pulls it forward. The darker the color, the more it pushes it back. So we're just going to make those grays a little bit darker. There we go. And then once again, I'm going to draw this across there. So we got those gradients going on there. So now I'm going to go to the 3D menu and go to New Mesh from Layer, Depth Map. Now you'll notice you have various uh, choices here. Plain, um, two-sided plane, solid extrusion, two-sided, you know, so I would encourage you to experiment with these, but the one we're going to use just to simply explain this is the plane uh, feature right here. So when I go ahead and choose that, it's going to look at the image and it's going to create that, as I said, that wave graphic or, or that wave 3D object based on those elements there. So as you can see right there is my wave and you'll see that it's pushing forward the lighter areas and then pushing back the darker areas. That's how it generates the, uh, the depth there. But now I wanna add <clears throat> the image of the background that we're looking at right here, instead of just being, it being a gray wall there. Now you'll notice here in the 3D panel, um, there's my depth map and there's the layer right there. So I'm gonna go in here and uh, first, let's go to that background layer, do a Command A, select all, and then Command C. Uh, to copy it to the clipboard. Then we'll go back to my 3D object. Now, because it was uh, created based on the same dimensions of this document, all I need to do is go in here into the diffuse property and choose edit texture. And you'll see there's that wave or that gradient. I'm gonna paste the image in here, close it and save the changes. And there you can see, I'm just gonna fill the background with black here. There you can see that graphic element is now wrapped around that wave that we created there. So I'm actually gonna move a little bit closer here. There we go. So now that I move it around, you can see it's got the um, default lighting on it, but now it's in 3D and has that really kind of cool um, look about it. So I'm actually gonna rotate it around here. Let's actually get it to where the wave is kind of like right here. Because what I want to do, um, I'm actually going to go ahead here and bring up my properties. So I'm going to use the same information on the texture. Let's rotate my view so you can see a little bit more. So I'm going to use my information about that texture to create a bump map. So I'm going to go down here to the bump settings here. And then go right in here, and then we'll go down here and choose layer one, which is that texture. And you'll see it updates, and now it's got that kind of rough texture to it. Now, I had somebody else ask me about normals down here, and this does something similar, and we're actually going to get into that another time, but I'm just using this case using a bump map. And now you can see as it um, interacts with the lighting in the scene, but now we've got a rather rough texture on that surface there. So uh, as usual, I'm going to go ahead and adjust my camera settings. Let's make it a little bit more dramatic. <clears throat> and I can move my lighting around if I want. I want to shine it on a particular part of the image. You can even, of course, add the realism of the depth of field. If I go ahead and do this, and then option click in the foreground element, or the foreground area, 
and that puts the focus in the front area and you'll notice it's a little blurrier as it gets further back there. But we've created realism, realistic depth, texture, and depth of field with just one simple texture than using the depth map. So that is what a depth map can do for you. So just uh, try experiment with uh, different things and just different lighting and textures and stuff like that and have fun with 3D depth maps in Photoshop. I'm Corey Barker here for Photoshop Master Effects Training. Be sure to check out uh, the rest of the videos here on YouTube and, of course, the premium tutorials over at MasterFXTraining.com.